when you look up at it, you really feel like you're connected to something bigger. I mean, it's just such a unique phenomenon. And it does stop you, and you cannot look away from it. I was really inspired by the aurora when I was four years old. There was this really big geomagnetic storm and I was living in Minnesota at the time and I actually saw the aurora as I was back trick-or-treating. It was the Halloween storms, one of the biggest geomagnetic storms ever. And then that sort of embedded like this latent passion for space physics and the aurora that eventually resurfaced when I was around 16. I became really interested in photography and just sort of found my way, um, was trying out different disciplines in space physics, like solar physics, space weather, then finally settled on the Aurora, and I really wanted to study that. And the Aerospace Corporation was sort of the place to do that. There's decades and decades of experience just right around me in my office where I can go to somebody and ask them a really tough question, and they can give me a good answer. The Aurora expands poleward, and then goes from an east-west configuration to a north-south configuration, so we were also looking at that. If you think about the aurora over an entire night as a storm, a substorm is like a 15 to 30 minute period where the aurora just goes nuts. And it fills the entire sky, it dances around, it gets really, really pretty. And while it's cool to look at, um, you know, admittedly, as a photographer, it's, that's like my favorite time of the night is when a substorm happens. If you're a spacecraft operator, you might be a little bit worried because substorms can cause issues for spacecraft flying through them. So. What happens usually is you have a large dumping of energy into the upper atmosphere and that creates a lot of heat and that can increase the density in those areas. And if you're a spacecraft trying to fly through that, all of a sudden you're flying through something more dense and there's increased drag. So you have to at least be aware of that, if not compensate for it. Auroral beads are a type of aurora that you can actually see with your own eyes. It's really cool. So. They appear as sort of a string of pearls that form along one of the auroral arcs. And what's very significant about auroral beads, they are seen right before substorms. And scientists have correlated substorms with beads, but nobody really knows how often beads actually lead to substorms. So it's kind of, are beads necessary but not sufficient to cause substorm initiation? And what we're doing here is looking at the exact relationship between beads and substorms, which hasn't been studied in depth before. Aerospace just has the expertise and has that hybrid culture of passion about the research, but how can we use that research to make a difference?